Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today we're going to talk about some really cool new software that popped up in the last couple weeks. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's called Purple. All right, so if you haven't been paying attention to the tool industry for the last few weeks, you have been missing out because all kinds of crazy shenanigans have been happening, and where we're at today is absolutely insane. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about a couple weeks ago, China released a bunch of pre-order products for these special brand new DFU boxes that you could just simply plug into your device and edit IC, serial numbers, all kind of crazy stuff, okay? Then... Before these products even took off, something came out of nowhere and just knocked them all over the ground. They're all useless now. They're all outdated. We don't even need them anymore. There is literally a software solution that does the exact same thing. Over the last week, I have been completely inundated by tons of questions. I don't even know how to handle it anymore. I just figured... Let's go ahead and go get the guy. Let's let's talk to him. Let's see what he's got to say. Let's let's see. Let's get the real answer from the source. So I went ahead. I contacted Julio. We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna talk to him now, and he's gonna tell us all about it. Everything you want to know, right here, right now, on the Art of Repair. So, hey, Julio, what's going on, man? Everybody, nice to be here. How are you? Oh man, you know, just here we are, man. This crazy thing we got going on right now. So. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how this came to happen, man. You just kind of came out here and just knocked a home run. Like, what's up, man? Tell us about it. As many of you, I've been a repair guy for almost 10 years. And only recently, I've moved to the motherboard repair scene. And that's where I got my first experience with the uh, NAND programmer. Actually, the WLPCIE programmer. So I started wondering why such devices could let you edit sysconfig information. And by tearing it down, I noticed that there was an iPhone motherboard inside of them. And uh, I started wondering why it was so special to give you such capabilities. And that's the point where I started looking for a solution that will let us achieve the same goal with the software only without involving hardware. That's almost when I started thinking about this solution, but there was no answer to my question because the there was no there was no way to load such images on iPhones. So you're saying you had this idea, you had a you had a thought of how you could make it work, but you really just didn't have a way to test it in really any fashion, shape, or form or anything. But recently, you know, we had something happen, you know, that I think opened the door for you, didn't it? Yeah. Are you talking about Checkmate, aren't you? Mm-hmm. You know it, bro. <laughs> yeah. Of course, that helped a lot because it, it, it allowed basically the, the possibility to run unsigned images on uh, production iPhones, which is the only way I could reach my final scope. In 2019, on September, this exploit was released, and that thing is the, the, the only thing my application relies on and uh, the CSD cable as well, but we'll come over it in a bit. <laughs> and after that, uh, I worked for a couple of months on the solution and managed to make my iPhone 10 boot to that mode and finally could make it happen. And the next steps were just porting the solution to as many devices as I could. Basically, this timeline is that as soon as this checkmate comes out, You've got a couple months of just hard work, just getting in there, just playing with it, right? And then you just drop this software on us like that, out of nowhere. Yeah, out of nowhere. Didn't expect to get as much visibility with it. I mean, I just honestly thought that this would have had like three or four users at all. And that's why I throw it there on Mega. <laughs> so it was nothing structured. It was just some sketchy project that I was uh, taking on for myself. Well, little did you know, apparently, um, man, that thing blew up. I mean, it is absolutely huge. Now, with that, the, the community as a whole have just, just been up in a firestorm, just questions left, right, center. You can't get anywhere without them. I personally am just, my entire inbox is filled, and I, I didn't even do anything. I didn't even do anything. So, obviously, that's why you're here today. So, with that being said, 
can you show us a little bit, you know, of your software and where we're going and what's going on here? Because people want to know, man, like, what's up? Yeah, of course. Let's jump into it. So I got my Power Pro version, which is actually unreleased yet. So I'm going to give you a demo on this. I'm going to connect my iPhone 10, which uh, was previously uh, set to the FU mode. And all we have to do is connecting with a DCSD cable and click the button, wait for the exploit to take effect. And the application will flow through its stages and we'll hopefully end up with uh, a device which is now booted in edit mode. And we are ready to edit all the sysconfig information and maybe much more. We have a lot of untested ground over here. What do you think about it? I mean, you know, that untested ground, that's some crazy stuff, you know. And like I said, we got those community questions. So you know that untested ground is about to get tested. So we're going we're gonna to be asking you some stuff because people definitely want to know. So now that we've got the, the Purple Pro software, it's obviously not released yet, you know, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that, you know, down the road. I think, I think we've got some important community questions here to, to ask you. So first and foremost, what are the data recovery implications of this? Can we do anything? Or are we going to be able to pull anything out of there? But, you know, people around the community have been asking, can I get data back with this? Or is this just not for that? Honestly, uh, and generally, I don't know. I, I've, I've not been playing too much yet with this. I've just tried my best to make it happen. I'm a very beginner level. So all I do is try to learn and try to help people. So that's where it came together in this application. But I will do my best to, do, to find out. Awesome, awesome, man. Now, the next one, they're asking, can this help me do anything with my face ID or my touch ID? Yeah, I, I don't think this is really related, but we'll find out in future. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, we got to ask the questions because these are just on repeat right now. People, copy pasta, copy pasta. <laughs> so we got to answer them, you know what I mean? So with that and, you know, with, with everything that we've been saying and everything, I, I noticed that it's Purple Pro. It's not Purple Light. You know, the Purple Light, you know, was just thrown out there. You know, everybody's been checking it out. I know you've been working really hard and everything on Purple Pro. What does that mean? Is that something that we're going to have to pay for? Is that something that's, you know, going to be subscription based? Like, is that going to, you know, what, what's the deal here? Yeah, the deal is bringing a full fledged support for all devices compatible with Checkmate. So we are spacing from iPhones to iPads and iPods as well. In first place, I will introduce with the, the software an interface to edit the information directly from macOS. So once the procedure of booting into the mode is complete, you just open up a window and you just do the whole thing over there without no complications or no changing of machines and stuff. And regarding payments, the application we will be downloadable for free and uh, it will be charging a, a little fee for each ECID. So it means you just pay once for each device. And this is related only to iPads and iPods. iPhones are and will always be for free. Okay, so from what I'm from what I'm understanding, this is going to be really good for the do-it-yourselfers. They just want to come in and they're going to hook their phone up and they'll always be able to use it with that phone going forward forever and ever. But what about the repair shops, the ones that are coming through 100 devices a day? Are they getting charged for every one? Or are you going to have some kind of subscription model or something that's going to help the repair shop use this Purple Pro? So we thought about that too and end up with the conclusion that we have also an optional uh, subscription plan. And uh, we're taking care both of the do-yourselfers and repair shops as well, as everybody needs to be satisfied by the usage of this application. This is taking it from top to jailbreak overnight, you know? So there's gonna be a huge user base for something like this. and. You know, it's really, really exciting to see. Um, I know that uh, I know that you were saying that you had been reading a ton of questions on your own. Is there anything that you've seen, like just in your kind of brief group travels on Facebook and some of these other groups, you're seeing what people are talking about that you want to bring up that maybe you think is kind of a concern that you want to kind of, you know, just bring up and talk to everybody about? 
Yeah, okay. Actually, there's a couple different ones, but which are actually recurring over time. And I'll take a read at some right now. For example, Matt Key is saying that he's interested in the software and is concerned about the hardware that is needed. So talking about the hardware that is needed for this tool to work is just about a simple cable. It's DCSD cable or any other serial cable that supports UART technology. Actually, regarding the cable, we came up building a, a proper team with Justin uh, from Art of Repair and a couple other developers to bring up a cable which will be dedicated to the, to the software that will be launched. For now, this is just a work in progress. So if you need a DCSD cable, you can find it from our partner vendors in my website, which is going to be in the description down below. Let's continue reading some other questions from people on Facebook. For example, Carlos Jr. Uh, is asking, like many other people, if there will ever be a, a version for Windows. Don't think so. <laughs> I'm sorry, Windows users. But uh, the application relies on exploits that are written for macOS. And I have no way close the knowledge to rewrite the exploits. So not in a close future, definitely not. So with with that being said, just listening to that, I know some people have been using some of the JC software to uh, to use the cable and edit some things, whatever. What are your thoughts on that? I, I haven't had my hands on those and I have literally no idea of how they work. We got a couple more questions over here. Cameron Baker asked me, what's the best OS to run this program on? Actually, the best OS to run this program on is macOS Mojave, so uh, 10.14, which is actually the, the system on which, this, the, on which the software was developed and tested on. So that's it. I saw some people ask even about Hackintosh devices or virtual machines and stuff. And I don't think there's going to be support for that because this relies on USB and it will cause problems with the, those kind of um, architectures. Uh, I see, I see. So basically Hackintoshes are out the door, no virtual machines. You better just have a real Macintosh or you're just going to have to hold out. You know what I mean? So. Man, dude, there is a lot of craziness with all of this, man. There's a lot of stuff happening, a lot of development happening, lots of things going on and stuff. I mean, it's been an adventure for you for the last few days, hasn't it? So actually, yeah, it was a, a nice adventure, uh, both funny and complicated. Actually, there was a couple uh, problems that were really common, unfortunately, and it's problem related to exploits uh, failing, which is something I could do nothing about. And the other problem is uh, the application showing up as damaged and macOS would suggest to move it to the trash. That's because the application is thought for personal use on my computer and it was not thought for distribution or such a massive usage. So it's a work in progress, you know? I really kind of feel like I know what's going on here. I feel like you had this idea, you, you, you had the opportunity to make it happen, and you really didn't think much of it. You just kind of threw it out there. People were going to play with it, and it literally went viral. It exploded. It just got over your head. There's so much going on. The whole deal was you wrote it for home use, and now it's being used like literally in production in all these shops across the world. So at this point, that means you pretty much have to either commit to this full time or you know, you're going to have to, it's, it's going to be a rough ride, you know what I mean? So, you know, with that being said, everybody, you know, you need to go get on this dude's PayPal and hook him up with something, you know what I'm saying? Because Purple Pro ain't out yet. I'm not even playing. You know I don't sponsor people. Go go get this dude some money, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but, so with that, he also did mention that the DCSD cables would be available on his website. Um, there will be links to different vendors around the world. Um I think right now for him, it's really difficult to have an entire manufacturing thing, you know, going on while he's just trying to get this thing started. So, you know, if you could help him out by visiting these vendors, the cost of these cables is going to be higher. And we know that the Chinese aftermarket vendors are literally going to be like $10 in a couple weeks. But what I'm asking you from Justin of the Art of Repair, support this guy. Go pay the extra money for this cable because we have deals worked out 
with these vendors, okay? And these vendors are going to give him a huge chunk, okay? A huge chunk of this money to literally keep developing his app. So please, go support the man, okay? He's put a lot of, like, he has been up all night for a while now. <laughs> so before before we go, Justin, I would like to take a, a moment to thank all the people that use my application and in particular thank all the people that donated to me to support my project. And I hope you're happy with the, with the software I provided you, even if it's sketchy and, and stuff. <laughs> this guy is a monster. It is super late. So with that being said, um, I think we, we kind of went over everything, you know, while I'm post editing, I'll throw some stuff in there and see if I can get some more information in. But, uh, I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you guys, you know, liked what you guys got to, to watch today and everything. But, you know, my name's Justin. This is The Art of Repair. This is Julio. And, uh, we'll see you soon. Follow me on Twitter. Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today we're going to talk about some really cool new software that popped up in the last couple weeks. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's called Purple.